What's up, guys? How's it going? Mike the Tech here, and welcome to a, another episode of our tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. Um, in this episode, we're going to be doing uh, some cool stuff with materials and interactions with objects within our game, um, including some work with blueprints. Uh, so before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Archangel, Leslie Media, and Todd M. Thank you so much for your support and for joining my channel. If you want to join my channel and show me some love, click on that join button below. I would very much appreciate it. Uh, with that being said, let's get back to the tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial, we're going to have a look around. Let's see here. And let's go ahead and what should we do first? Well, first, let's get rid of that sound when we shoot because that's very loud. So click on your first your first person character here and you're going to edit the blueprint. So this is edit first person blueprint. You're going to click on that. And um, I already have it zoomed into it, but you're going to see this mess of blueprints here. Um, we're going to look for the commented set of blueprints down here called spawn projectile. So this is what happens when we press the fire button and it spawns the projectile. It plays a little montage to show that your character is moving and um, or not show that your character is moving. It plays a montage to make your character move. So it shows you going kind of like recoiling. And then um, over here we have to uh, spawn the actual actor. And then it says play a firing sound. And it's really easy to remove this. We could just hit delete. But instead, we're going to click on this little execute here. We'll right click on that and break link. What this allows us to do is it stops it from happening, but it keeps it here in our um, blueprint in case we want to connect it again later. So if you want to add your own gun sounds or just turn them on later, you can do that. I'm going to leave it off for now and we'll hit compile. And it compiled properly. And now when we play the game, there will be no gun sounds, which is perfect. Makes it a little easier on the ears when we're editing, right? So let's go ahead and create a material. Uh, so I'm going to raise my scalability up just a bit because it looks kind of funny um, with my character glitching here. So let's, let's just go up to cinematic so it's not glitching too much. That still looks like it's running all right. And um, we're going to make a new material. So let's open up our content drawer. And we're going to go to our content menu. Let's make a new folder and call it materials. Go into that folder, right click and create a new material. Uh, let's make a red material. So we're going to call this matte red, <laughs> not matte red. It's actually going to be glossy in this one, but <laughs> material, matte for material. And we're going to double click on that. Uh, once we have this material open, you can see that you have a few options to work with. We have the base color, which we're going to use. We have metallic, um, which shows how metal-like you like it to be and how reflective. You have roughness, specular, anastrophe, emissive color, if you want it to give off a light. Um, you have your normal maps, if it's an object, a 3D object. And all these great um, features, some of these are um, blocked out like opacity, for example, and that's just because the material type is set different. If we change this to like a decal, it has its own set of options available. So we'll move this back to a surface and we want to make it red to start. So we're going to drag off of base color. Actually, we're going to use, can I use a vector? Yeah, I'm going to use a vector parameter and we're going to name this, we're actually going to just make it red. And you'll see that now our um, object is red. And if we hit save, we can actually go into the content browser, drag that material onto an object, and now we have a red object in our scene. Uh, we want to do a little bit more to this, though. I'm going to show you how to create a integer style variable. They're called scalar parameters in Unreal Engine 5. And we're going to make this a little metallic. So we're going to drag off of metallic here and type in scalar parameter. And this is going to let us choose a number between 0 and 1. So the default value is 0. We're going to change this to 1. And you'll see that now, oops, it's nice and shiny. So let's go ahead and save that. All right. And now we want to do the same thing for roughness. So I'm actually going to copy this 
and paste it with Control C and Control V. And I want to drag roughness down here. And instead of setting it to one, I'm going to set this to zero. And now we can see it's very shiny and reflective. It's not rough at all, and it's very metallic. So let's save this and see how it looks in our scene. And you can play with some of these other types as well. There's a lot of great stuff you can do with materials, and we'll be doing some more of that later. Um, let's go ahead and go into the content drawer and drag this material back in. And you'll see that it is quite reflective. And let's play the game. And yep, you can see reflections. And um, we turned off some of the lumens lighting, so you're, it's not as defined, but it's definitely shiny now. Very nice. So now uh, let's create some interactions. What we're going to do is turn one of these cubes into a blueprint. And what we want to happen is when we shoot the cube, we want it to change to that red material to show that we hit it. And then we want it to change back after a few seconds to show that it's not damaged anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click on one of our boxes. Hey, quit staring at my boxes. <laughs> uh, Miss Kiff joke. So we're going to click on this actor, this box, and we're going to click on this little icon right here. This is convert this actor into reusable blueprint class. And we're going to name this blueprint um, cube reactive. And let's go ahead and just select the aesthetic mesh actor. All right, so now we have a cube reactive. <laughs> um, in this cube, we see that we have the um, static mesh for the cube and not too much else. So um, we want to turn on simulation generates a hit when um, it collides. So we'll keep that checked. And then we want to add um, we want to add a new event. So we want on event hit, which is on component hit here. We're going to go to our event graph. And you'll see we have begin play, begin overlap, and begin tick, but those are unneeded. We need, uh, where to go? We need on event hit. So click on that. And now we have an event hit, um, event, event hit, component hit event. Sorry, I'm off my game today. Um, so in this event, we want to, um, basically change the material if it hits a projectile. So we have which actor hit it right here is other actor so that we can define um, if it hits the ground, it's not going to change color, but if it hits a projectile, it is. So uh, let's drag off of this right here to say the next thing to do. And then we're going to type in cast to third, oh, first, sorry, first person projectile. All right, so now this is going to say that um, we want it to only collide with the first person projectile by choosing other actor here. Perfect. Um, let's place this here and we're going to drag off of this pin again and we're going to type in set material. And that's the great thing about blueprints is set material is a very plain language way of looking for code. So if I want to set a material or play a sound, often you can just type in that action and find what you're looking for. So I'm going to set the material of our static mesh component. Okay. And um, we can actually make this a little easier and delete this and choose target as hit component. Right, so this is it already knows what component was hit, and then um, we want to have a slight delay. Let's make it maybe three seconds, and then we want to set material again to another material, and again we can delete this and actually specify that we want it to change our hit component. So we have that, then we have a delay, 
And then we have that. That way you can kind of see where all the lines are going, right? Um, so this should work, but we haven't selected any materials to use for these. So we want our first material to be the red one we made. So let's scroll down until we see our matte red. There it is. And then we want to change it back to its default material. So what is its default material? Let's click on this. And we see that it uses cube material. That makes it easy. So we're going to just click on cube material right here. And we'll hit compile. Luckily, everything seems to have compiled correctly. And let's try it out. So if we shoot this one, nothing happens. If we shoot that one, it turns red. After three seconds, it changes to the gray cube material. Looks like that's not quite the material. I think world material is the correct one. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. Again, we just click on this edit blueprint. And let's change this one to base material. I think that would be closer. And try it again. There we go. Looks just like the other ones. Perfect. So now we have some basic interactions in our game. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you want me to add next, or um, if I record a few videos, what you want me to add next in the series. Um, I think we'll be doing landscapes, uh, some user interface options, and things like that moving forward, maybe even some camera stuff. But let me know what you want to see, and I'm happy to jump back into this and make more content. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Peace. What? You've never heard of stream savers, and you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99, and that's a great price.